All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here this morning. Oh, that's good volume. I love that. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. <laughs> Sorry, song I remember from the 60s, but uh, good morning. <laughs> Thanks all for being here. Um, so um, today, our special guest and presenter today is Ali Busich. She is the executive director of Pemet Parks. She just celebrated her second anniversary the other day. Prior to her becoming the, the executive director, she was uh, on contract with us as a project manager for the, the community recreation center that uh, Penmet Parks is building at the old driving range. Down. She's going to give us an update on that today and some other things. So please welcome Ali Busich. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is very nice to be here this morning. Um, can, can, is this okay volume? Okay, great. Um, really happy to be here today. The last time I shared um, with Public Affairs Forum was a little less than a year ago in June 2022, and um, eager to share some of the work that Penmet Parks has uh, been doing since then. And there, there has been some work. So today I'm going to focus on three main areas uh, during our conversation, and I'm going to leave room for Q&A. Um, but the topics that I want to dive into are an organizational overview, an update on some of the initiatives that Penmet Parks is focused on right now and how you can be involved with those, uh, and a capital project update that really uh, is centered around the community recreation center that we are developing. So um, looking forward to that and looking forward to hearing your questions. So before we, uh, I dive into that, um, I, again, my name is Ali Busich. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Commissioner Grimmer. Um, I am the executive director for Penmet Parks, just uh, getting into uh, the third year there. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, Commissioner Kurt Grimmer, Parks Commissioner, and I believe we have uh, Parks Commissioner Steve Nixon joining us via Zoom today. Uh, so a couple of Parks Commissioners here with us. So diving in. Penmet Parks is a metropolitan park district that was formed by a vote of the people uh, in 2004. So I always pause when I um, register that 2004 was less than 20 years ago. And that is quite striking to me that uh, in a very short amount of time, Penmet Parks has very firmly rooted itself in this community to the extent that uh, I have a hard time remembering what life was like before Penmet Parks. And uh, I've shared my story, my Penmet Parks story here before. I'm not going to do it again today, but I love to talk about it. So please uh, ask me. Happy to share that with you. Um, I'm, I'm not, my, my perception isn't just based on my employment uh, the last couple of years. My own personal experiences with Penmet Parks have shaped my relationship with the district. I have experienced myself how this park district has impacted me and my children and my family and my friends and my neighbors and really my entire community. And it is for those reasons that I will be an advocate for this park district for life. And those are the kind of relationships that we want to build with everyone in this community. And we are. And I know that because people share their PenMet Park stories with me. And I find that delightful. So uh, please don't be shy. Um, and it's, it's amazing to learn about the different and diverse ways uh, that the work of PenMet Parks is making a difference for many people. Uh, so Penmet Parks manages 650 acres, uh, a little bit more actually, of parkland spread across our 50 square mile district. We provide recreation uh, programs for everyone, and we serve about 40,000 people within our district. Our district spans um, from the Kitsap County line, so uh, our Maplewood property up in the north, to Fox Island in the south. We like to say uh, from bridge to bridge, from the Narrows Bridge to uh, the Purdy Spit. You will note that our district boundaries don't include the city of Gig Harbor, which has its own parks department, or the Key Peninsula, which has its own metropolitan park district. But we certainly recognize that we are a comprehensive uh, community. The district is governed by a board of park commissioners. These um, Park commissioners are elected to serve staggered six-year terms by uh, the voters in our district. Uh, park commissioners are elected officials. They are not district employees. And the board as a governing body is responsible for establishing policy direction for the district, setting goals and objectives, and approving the annual budget. 
The board has one employee, the executive director, who acts as the chief executive officer. So PennMet Parks is a municipal corporation. Uh, in other words, we are a government entity and we are publicly funded. Uh, this year in 2023, we are budgeted to collect just over $10 million in our general fund, which is the principal operating fund of the district. Um, this revenue does not include program fees that we collect for um, some of our community programs. About 80% of these revenues, the biggest piece of the pie, uh, will come in the form of property taxes and other uh, major revenue sources include impact fees, real estate excise tax and uh, sales tax that's collected in unincorporated Pierce County. So I wanna look a little more deeply at the biggest piece of the pie, the, uh, the sales tax, or excuse me, the property tax to provide some visibility into how PennMet Parks is funded and how uh, it impacts uh, residents' property taxes. So as a metropolitan park district, we are uh, what's known as a junior taxing district. So similar to fire district or a library district. Per state law, metropolitan park districts may collect up to 75 cents per $1,000 of assessed value uh, of a property within our district boundaries. But that doesn't mean that we do collect 75 cents. Uh, we're not guaranteed that rate. So there's other factors that influence that. There's annual limits and how uh, much taxes can be collected, a levy limit. Uh, and there's also what we call the 590 aggregate rule, which states that all local ta taxing districts as a whole uh, cannot collect more than $5.90 per assessed value. That pie cannot get any larger than $5.90. The pieces of the pie can change sizes, but the, the pie doesn't change. Uh, and those factors can and do affect our levy rate. So this is our historic levy rate going back to 2006 when we first collected. Uh, in 2018, you can see this rate jumped up to 75 cents. That is a result of a levy lid lift, which voters approved in 2017, and that restored PennMet Park's 75 cent uh, rate. Today, based again on those uh, factors I just uh, uh, explained, we are collecting 58 cents uh, per thousand dollars in assessed value. So as a public agency, it is our responsibility to protect the public purse. This is public money. Uh, we take that responsibility very seriously, and I encourage you to learn about our budget, our full budget and a narrative is available on our website. Our monthly financial reports are available on our website. And there's lots of opportunities for you to get involved and provide input on how this budget is spent. And I will uh, share more of those in just a few minutes. So we are a public agency, we are a government agency, but we are very strategic and we are a mission driven organization. This is our mission. You'll hear me say this all the time. It is beautiful and powerful in its simplicity. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life by providing park, parks and recreation opportunities for our community. We are living this every day. This guides our decisions from the minor to the major and everything in between. We are here to advance our mission. Our vision is to be a leader promoting health and well being in a thriving community. I do believe that, that that aspirational vision of a thriving community is something we all share. And that is why we are here today. That is why we live here, we work here, we play here. And PennMet Parks is so honored to be able to uh, contribute to that. And finally, our values, stewardship, inspiration, responsibility, collaboration, and integrity. These are the principles that we hold most high these are the principles that guide the way we do business as we provide park and recreation services for our community uh, day in and day out. So what does this actually look like uh, in practice? Um, so uh, we own and operate 22 parks. Uh, again, this is covers just over 650 acres, 21 miles of trails, beaches, dog parks, uh, playgrounds, athletic fields, uh, and a golf course and more. These are your parks. These are available to you. These belong to you. And these are remarkable places. 
we offer hundreds of community programs every year. Um, I was chatting before this meeting. We just uh, finished a, a report looking at some of our recreation programs. And in 2023, we provided over 460 recreation programs that served over 6,000 people. And that doesn't include the free community events that serve thousands more. These programs are available to everyone, regardless of age or ability. Our mission-led programming includes programming for youth, seniors, summer camps, special populations, and a four-season youth recreational sports league that focuses on the principles of sportsmanship, team building, and building the whole child over just winning the game. But that's fun too. <laughs> uh, so when I um, presented to you a little less than a year ago in June 2022, I shared that we were just beginning our strategic planning process. And I encouraged you to get involved in that. And you did. And since then, that plan has been completed. It was adopted by the Board of Park Commissioners uh, in January, earlier this year. This plan is your plan. This is shaped by your feedback. It reaffirms the district's mission statement that I just shared with you. Our vision statement that I shared was developed through this planning process based on your feedback. Uh, it identifies our strategic themes for the next five years, which include delight and engage the community, balanced financial accountability, operational excellence, and an inspired and accountable district. The, w th this plan uh, was not created to sit on a shelf and, and look pretty, although I do think it's pretty. <laughs> It was designed to be used, and I assure you this plan is being used every day. This guides our decisions. Um, this full plan is available on our website. I am uh, encourage you to, to, to um, visit that and, and learn more about it. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to sharing updates with you as we work this plan and track this progress. And what this plan does is it keeps us accountable and it keeps us disciplined. We uh, like probably all of us in this room, are faced with choosing between competing priorities, all of which are worthy, uh, and, and balancing limited resources to accomplish uh, progress in those areas. This is the plan that serves as our North Star. So with that, some of the current initiatives that we are focused on uh, this year, and this is not a comprehensive list, um, but again, I'm always happy to talk offline, uh, so some of the things we're working on, we are focused on defining and enhancing the district's level of service. So in other words, we are going to continue to insist on quality programs, quality services, and raising the bar, but doing it efficiently, doing it effectively, uh, and providing the maximum services possible within available resources. We're continuing to emphasize uh, attracting, developing, and retaining staff. Our human resources are one of our greatest assets, and our human resources, our staffing costs constitute about 30% of our operating budget. We're advancing the development of a charitable organization to support PenMet Parks. This public-private partnership model has proven to be effective, and we are challenging ourselves to find new and creative ways to engage our community with stewarding its park district. We're renewing the parks, recreation, and open space plan. You'll hear me call this the pros plan. This serves as the district's comprehensive master plan, and it will ultimately become the physical manifestation of the strategic plan that I just shared with you. Uh, lots of opportunities to get involved with this and really important that you get involved with this. And I'll share more about that in just a few minutes. This plan will define the community needs for park development, park amenities, program uh, needs, and open space. And that is what is going to help us prioritize these limited resources over the next four to six years. Uh, we are focused on providing more robust programming to certain populations, including seniors, people with disabilities, and teens and youth as well as focused again on continue, uh, on raising the bar for program quality with modest in, uh, increases to um, program offerings in other areas such as adult programming, uh, adult sports, camps, and special events. 
And uh, finally, we are supporting a significant increase in um, the utilization and the accessibility of our recreation scholarship program. A few months ago in February, um, the board adopted a new plan, which we've rolled out. Uh, this is an expanded recreation scholarship program, which is now available to all ages. Uh, there are more gen generous benefits, uh, more eligibility, a streamlined application and award process, uh, and we've allocated $50,000 in our budget this year to award scholarships. Our goal is to reduce and mitigate barriers to access to the programs. Um, and financial is one of those. So coming into 2023, we uh, made a promise to the community and we said, we are going to listen to you and learn from you um, as we plan for our future. This future is, is not just Penmet Park's future, it is your future. We can't do this alone. We need to understand uh, community, community need in order to be able to respond to that. And all, all of that to say, your input is so important. Uh, the best place to learn about current uh, opportunities and, and ways to become engaged with the Park District is our website, but I want to highlight a couple of upcoming uh, opportunities for uh, uh, input over the next month or so. This is so timely this month. Uh, in April, we are really leaning into our pros plan, our comprehensive plan, uh, public engagement. So today, uh, when you leave this meeting, go to our website. Uh, our, our website now has a dedicated page for the pros plan. This will remain up for the duration of the planning process, will, which will um, last several more months. On that website, you can find an online survey, which I encourage you to take. We also have an interactive website that's going to remain up uh, and live for the duration of this planning process. You can add comments. You can respond to other people's comments. There's a map. You can drop pins with ideas, questions, thoughts. This is a wonderful way to provide your input on shaping the future. Uh, this Saturday, the, the day after tomorrow, uh, is Parks Appreciation Day, community-wide. So uh, as we did last year, Penmet Parks has teamed up with the city of Gig Harbor to identify a handful of sites around our community. Uh, we're hosting a volunteer work party at Tubby's Trail uh, Dog Park, which is located just off Highway 16 uh, near the bridge. Please join us from nine to noon. Uh, we will be planting trees, encourage you to uh, come out uh, or, or visit another site in our community. Uh, next week, we've got a couple of community meetings. Penmet Parks is in the process of conducting two feasibility studies. One feasibility study looks at the viability of developing and operating a dedicated space for seniors in our community. The second feasibility study is studying the viability of developing and operating a community aquatic facility. We have uh, activated community steering committees to guide each of these projects. They are also guided by public input. Um, so I, uh, there is a meeting on uh, Monday night at six o'clock at the Arletta Schoolhouse regarding uh, the dedicated space for seniors. And there's a meeting on Tuesday night, uh, same same time, same place, Arletta Schoolhouse at six o'clock on Tuesday regarding uh, the Community Aquatic Center. So certainly encourage you to uh, come to those and, and provide feedback. And finally, uh, looking into next month, mark your calendars, May 17th, we'll have a pros open house. We'll talk about what we've heard so far and share some of those results with you. Uh, okay, moving into capital projects. Um, I shared earlier that Penmet Parks uh, owns and, or operates 22 parks and properties in our community. And um, these aren't just any old, any old place. These are unique, they are special, they are meaningful. And the community has entrusted us with caring for these places so that we can enjoy them, our children can enjoy them, and our children's children can enjoy them. We take that seriously. Um, so we have implemented a robust capital improvement program uh, des that's designed to maintain and, and improve and enhance these facilities. Uh, so I'm gonna share a couple of highlights from recent projects and then uh, jump into current projects. Uh, in 2022, uh, we replaced the synthetic turf field at Zamel Homestead Park. So uh, through strategic um, project management, we uh, found some cost savings that allowed us to enhance this project within the available budget. Um, 
we were able to install state-of-the-art projects that improved the playability and safety of this field. This is actually the same turf that is used at Husky Stadium. Uh, and this project was funded, um, about 30% of this project was funded through a state uh, grant uh, through the Recreation and Conservation Office. Also in 2022, we completed renovating the historic Arletta Schoolhouse. And this is um, um, just a beautiful, a beautiful spot. And if you haven't uh, had a chance to come to this building yet, I invite you to do that. This is available for community use. Um, the Board of Park Commissioners is currently holding its meetings here, but it's open to anyone. Um, coming up, uh, we are currently in design for the renovation of Rosedale Hall, another community treasure. Um, this project uh, objective is to restore some aged systems, to create some accessibility improvements, but to maintain the character of this of this treasure. Um, looking ahead, we are just beginning uh, getting ready to begin design on a master plan for the Demole uh, sand spit uh, on Fox Island. Oh, oh, thanks. Uh, and uh, a district-wide signage master plan, as well as improvements at the Fox Island Fishing Pier, Tubby's Trail, Dog Park, and uh, some paving work at Narrows Park. Thank you. So these are just uh, a handful of the places that contribute to the vitality of our community, certainly not a comprehensive list. Uh, these places provide essential spaces for us to play, to meet, to, to create, and to recreate, and they define us as a community. We are unique. Can't find this anywhere else. Uh, but these, these facilities and parks that I just shared with you alone are not enough. We are facing a critical need in our community uh, for recreation spaces. So this project, the Indoor Community Recreation Center, is to to help us move closer to meeting that need for indoor recreation spaces. And you are just going to have to believe me that, that it is a beautiful building. <laughs> um, so let, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about this project. Um, we began work on this several years ago. And before we started design, we went out to the community and we said, what do you need? What are the priorities? And we spent quite a bit of time studying that need with our community. We developed a 20 member steering committee that said, um, that said our, primary, uh, our primary programmatic needs are an indoor turf field, indoor multi-purpose courts, a walk and jog track, a place where we can safely walk, move, jog, regardless of the, what the daylight or weather conditions might be outside. We live in the Pacific Northwest um, and um, multi-use community spaces. That is what this facility contains. Uh, this is, this is the, of course, the floor plan for the new facility. And, and by the way, this is located at uh, the site of the old Performance Golf Center, the driving range located just off Highway 16 um, on 14th. Um, this space is designed not just for children, not just for athletes, it's going, going to serve children and athletes, it is, but it's also going to be a place for adults, for babies, for seniors, for artists, for um, yogis, for, for all of us, for, for you and for me. Uh, this facility is a place for everyone. This is a community recreation center. Um, the new building, which is located in the in the uh, back uh, rear ground of this image, um, will be um, separated from the existing building. And those of you who are golfers probably remember the building in the foreground. This used to be the pro shop for the driving range by an expansive event lawn. And this is a multi-purpose lawn. You'll hear me say multi-purpose, flexible, multi-use over and over again today. Each of these spaces was designed to be maximized, to be alive, to be programmed, to be utilized. So by, by design, they are all flexible and multi-use. This um, building in the foreground, the old pro shop, is being renovated as we speak, uh, literally, um, to function as both a community space, uh, a large uh, meeting or program space, as well as the permanent home for Penmet Park's um, administrative offices. So. 
Last thing I'll point out here is on the uh, left side of the site, the west side, uh, budding highway 16 is an extension of the Cushman trail and this is almost a half mile extension that will bring the Cushman trail from its current southern terminus uh, all the way to 24th which is the overpass uh, a very big step closer to connecting it to the narrows bridge and the regional trail system beyond I'm going to uh, share a video with you a fly through a couple of them actually showing the site uh, so new parking will be added to serve this uh, new building. In total, uh, this is about a 65,000 square foot uh, facility on a 17 acre campus. Um, this project only develops maybe about 60% of that campus. So there is room for future expansion and the building is designed to accommodate that. We paid very close attention to the design of this project and, and, and we asked for community feedback on this design. And what we heard was the program is of more importance than the design, but the design matters. So don't just take a building that could be located anywhere and, and plop it down in the middle of uh, the site, make it Pacific Northwest, make it Gig Harbor. And you'll see those materials reflected throughout this project. Uh, natural woods, very human scale uh, design. Um, the primary recreation spaces will be uh, joined together by a, a, a welcoming lobby. This is where you can find information all the time about Penmet Parks, be assisted by staff and have great views to um, community spaces down that hall that, that just uh, flew by us. The gymnasium has three multi-purpose sport courts. There is a, an elevated walk jog track that can be used anytime uh, by anyone. This facility is accessible and you can see um, in we're approaching the elevator to the mezzanine level walk jog track, which has great views into both the multi-sport courts, which can accommodate basketball, pickleball, volleyball, as well as the indoor turf field, which Yes, will certainly be used for soccer, but also for football, for cheer, for uh, toddler uh, play. Uh, again, all of this is designed to be flexible and multi-purpose. Um, so I mentioned that Penmet Parks is renovating, as we speak, the existing building, and um, I would would love to take you all on a hard hat tour of that space. Um, I can't, so I'm gonna do the next best thing. And this is about a month old, so things look different today. Um, but this building's under construction. It will serve, this large open space will serve as a community space. It can accommodate large meetings, um, programs. It will also function as a lobby during business hours. There is a uh, infrastructure for a warming kitchen. There are Penmet Parks offices, um, administrative offices and customer service, both downstairs and upstairs. and um, for those of you who have, have been to this driving range, and, and I know I spent quite a bit of time there um, with my dad growing up, um, this looks similar in some ways, but it also will look uniquely Penmet Park. So we really studied this asset and understood how we could work with the bones, um, be good uh, stewards of our resources, and make it functional. Uh, this phase one work will be done in the next couple of months. We call this phase one and then the new building, the Cushman Trail and the event lawn phase two. So you'll hear me refer to that. Um, this is a view from the second floor window. So um, those of you who were golfers probably are very familiar with this view. Um, this looks like a, a field with some old AstroTurf, some, maybe some construction debris. I see some, some septic system risers. And that might not look like, but when I see this, I envision a comprehensive recreation campus that is going to serve all in our community. And that, that is what I see when I look at, at this view. So this, this project matters. It matters uh, to all of us. Uh, and it's going to impact our community in many ways. Um, sports and recreation being one of those. And uh, we have a bona fide need for indoor recreation spaces in our community. The indoor soccer center uh, closed in 2018 and that void 
uh, that it has left behind has not yet been filled. This project will close that gap. Community members here are competing for limited court spaces and there, there simply isn't enough to go around. And again, this facility will help close that gap that meet that unmet need. Um, but this facility does go beyond um, sports and recreation spaces. It will promote health and wellness for everyone through robust programming that's coupled with passive recreation opportunities. Um, this, this center will be another vehicle for Penmet Parks to deliver its services for our community. It will build community. And to me, this is one of the, this is at the core uh, of Penmet Parks impact um, on our community is bringing people together, creating a vibrant place where we want to be. This center will become a place where people can come together, a place where big ideas are born, where people have conversations, face-to-face -face conversations. This will provide a safe place after school for kids to come and shoot hoops and do homework. Uh, this will be a place for seniors to meet, to visit, to, to move, to recreate. This is a place for all of us. And this center will have an economic impact. Uh, in addition to the short-term jobs created by this project, uh, it's going to create about 10 um, FTE equiv uh, full-time equivalent positions for their, uh, that are permanent. And this is a regional facility. Um, it's going to bring people to our community who will, are going to shop and dine and stay here. Uh, and there will be visitors. So while the core service area for the uh, center is really the Gig Harbor Peninsula, the key peninsula in South Kitsap County, the draw uh, really comes uh, from the entire Kitsap uh, Peninsula, as well as Tacoma, East Pierce County, and, and further areas with a total reach of about 440,000 people. So I want to take a look at the project budget, the pro total project cost, which includes construction costs and soft costs. So things like permitting, sales tax, design fees, furniture, equipment uh, is $31.6 million. About half of that funding, half of this pie uh, is through a bond, which the district secured in 2021. Uh, we enjoy favorable interest rates. Um, that bond uh, is entirely within Penmet Park's existing debt capacity. So in other words, um, it does not have an impact on taxes. It is within our current operating budget. The next biggest piece of the pie, the 11.6 million, is funded through Penmet Park's capital reserves. And this, again, does not have an impact on taxes. It is a result of, of, of simply years of wise financial management, saving, and planning for this project. So in total, this project is just under 90% funded. Uh, we are now focused on the smallest piece of the pie, uh, the $4 million. Um, this is the funding gap that remains. And today we are working on closing that gap uh, through a combination of public funding and private philanthropic support. And uh, we have partnered with the Greater Tacoma Community Foundation as our fiscal sponsor as a 501c3 for uh, this uh, campaign um, to fund the remainder of this project. I also want to just touch on operations. Um, it would be irresponsible to invest, make this capital investment without a plan to operate and maintain this building. So before um, making the decision to move forward, Penmet Parks conducted an extensive operational pro forma to study ongoing operations uh, for this facility. Um, what we found, and I'm happy to share details, is by the end of the year three of operations, this facility should be almost 100% self-sustaining. So what's next? Um, where do we go from here? So, uh, again, phase one uh, will be completed here in the next few months. Um, we will make an announcement when we are, when we are th uh, there and we'll be open to the public. Um, phase two, we are getting very close close uh, to receiving our permit from Pierce County. We believe we've uh, worked with the county very productively throughout this process. Uh, design is complete. This application was submitted in 2022. Once we have that permit in hand, we will take phase two out to bid. And we expect that to happen um, in May or June of this year. 
the um, we once once we receive bids, uh, we will commence construction and expect to open this facility to the public in 2024. Uh, at this time, um, that brings me to the end of of my presentation. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, and uh, this it's very timely. Um, as 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 we know, next year is PenMet Park's 20 year anniversary, and I believe that should be celebrated and commemorated. And I think um, we need to, as part of that, we need to look back and remember how we got here and and all of all of the work that was done. Um, by our community to get to us to, uh, to this point today. I think that that, as you said, that is a natural time to look forward to the next 20 years. And I'm looking forward to beginning to engage the board and the community in that conversation, that 20 year visioning as we get to our 20 year anniversary. I, I'm, I'm just curious, it seems to me that there are several um, boards of the recreation facilities in the area, whether it's whether it be in the park or the schools or the Y or the city parks, is there a kind of formal um, interaction between those organizations as you're looking forward to deciding who's going to be there? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, we recognize that we are we are one, we are one community and um, our organizations collaborate and communicate um, constantly. And so I think an example of that is um, Penma Parks is, is very focused on this indoor recreation center. Um, the, the city of Gig Harbor is focused on uh, right now on um, uh, some outdoor recreation. Um, Penmet Parks just completed a study um, that looked comprehensively at a community inventory of recreational programs and facilities. And that includes not just public agencies, but private organizations as well. We think that it's important to have the data to look collectively at where are the gaps, who are the best service providers. It may not be PenMet Parks, probably isn't PenMet Parks in every case. And to be able to use that data to make really informed decisions and to have informed conversations with our neighbors um, throughout the community. So that study was uh, completed um, last month. The Board of Park Commissioners just heard its first reading on Tuesday and will consider adopting that study at the next board meeting. And if I can add, um, there's a the Center and the Senior, senior Center. The, the steering committees on those are representatives of those various uh, organizations that you mentioned, including the Y and the C. So that's the broader event. Thank you. You indicated that your your new facility is going to hopefully be uh, bringing in the youth after school activities. Now. This facility is a little bit away from any of the schools and what have you. So how do you anticipate that the youth will arrive at the new facility? Are you coordinating with Pierce County Transit? Are you anticipating a bus system of your own? Or how do we get the kids to your facility? Such a great question. And you have identified a barrier to participation. And thank you. So the question was, um, the new recreation facility is not located on a bus line. Uh, forgive me, I'm paraphrasing. But um, how, how are we going to get kids specifically to this recreation center uh, to make it accessible to, to them um, after school? Um, great question. And transportation is, is a barrier to participation. And it's not just a barrier to participation for, for kids. Um, 
it's a barrier to participation for other populations as well. So we, um, as we identify these barriers, we begin to lean into them and, and transportation is, is one of the, the next on the list that we really need to study and start having those conversations and doing that investigation as to how to sol solve that. Okay. Hey, Alex, uh, do you have any, any updated uh, plans, thoughts for uh, two properties that are in your inventory, Harbor Family Park, about 38 or 40 acres uh, that you might talk about, and also the uh, former uh, Peninsula Garden site, 10 or 12 acres. What are the thoughts on those currently? Thank you. The question was Do we have any uh, plans for Harbor Family Park or Peninsula Gardens? Um, Harbor Family Park, um, we do not have any current uh, plans for that park. However, I uh, would expect that the pros plan um, that we're conducting right now, the Parks, Rec, and Open Space plan, is going to inform the, those big picture priorities in terms of um, park amenities, parkland development, and help steer that and allow us to create that long range plan um, for Harbor Family Park and others. Uh, Peninsula Gardens, uh, the pros plan will inform Peninsula Gardens as well. Um, Peninsula Gardens is also the site of a couple, uh, or excuse me, one of the, the identified sites for the uh, feasibility study for a dedicated space for seniors and for the feasibility study for a community aquatic center. Um, for both of those feasibility studies, uh, we've really opened it up to the community to identify sites. We have, um, Penn Met Parks has suggested a couple of options within the park district, but um, we are, as, as part of that study, we're really wanting to look at sites why, regardless of whether they are inside or outside district boundaries. Um, so that is an, uh, Peninsula Gardens is one of those options. Thank you. The question was, what about the putt-putt course at the former driving range? Uh, the putt-putt course is going to stay. And I apologize that I didn't, didn't mention that, uh, the board just approved a, a project budget. It's separate from, from the, um, the big project to renovate that course and, uh, stay tuned because we want your ideas on how to make that course, um, uh, ours, uh, our community. So um, more to come on that. The, the board approved that project budget two days ago. Uh, but yes, we, we are looking forward to turning over a new and improved putt-putt course. And I understand that in Hunter Forest Park last week, there was a large cat there and that blazing on the spur it said, go foods. I, I heard that's true. <laughs> <laughs> And first question is the thirty-one million dollar number is that based on current dollar estimates? That'd be great. Second question then is your shortfall of four and change. What, what's your outreach? How are we how are we raising that money? Thank you. So the question was, uh, is the thirty-one point six million dollar project budget current? Um, and the the answer is yes. Um, we have been updating cost estimates along the way. Um, when this project design started uh, pre-COVID um, and uh, as we, and COVID changed things and we saw that happen um, with the supply chain and the construction market and we, we've worked through that. Uh, the second question is we have a $4 million gap shortfall that we need to close. What, what's our plan? What's our outreach plan? Um, so a couple things. Um, I, to close that gap, we are focused on both uh, public and private funding. We are embarking on a capital campaign to support this project um, that is just uh, getting started. So we have um, started um, that outreach on the on the uh, philanthropic side and again partnered with Greater Tacoma Community Foundation in that work. Um, and on the public side, we are pursuing public funding opportunities. Um, so, um, you know, uh, a couple years ago, we put it with mice. Well, we put mice for the other day on the dirt on it. Can you tell us a little about that technology? Certainly. So the question is, can I talk about the lighting technology at Zamel Homestead Park? Uh, so the, the lights were installed, um, and Commissioner Germer, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe 2019. 
2019. Uh, and that has dramatically improved the usability of the Zamel Homestead Park field. These lights uh, are directional, so they illuminate the field and the field alone. Uh, and it's proven to be very successful that uh, Zamel Homestead Park has uh, some conservation easements. And we, so we had to be very careful to um, work within uh, those. And the lighting has been very successful. Yes, allowed uh, rentals in the field for soccer and stuff like that to go on and help the intertime after we get started. You got an existing building there that you're regularly engaged on, I guess, in terms of that community space or community. Can you elaborate on that, just the size of that space and what are the specific uh, or potential uses for that as a community center or whatever? Thank you. Um, the question uh, was, and Miriam, let me know if we don't if we're getting better audio, uh, what is the, uh, what will the, talk more about the community space and the existing building of the rec center. Um, so this space, like most spaces in the rec center is multi-purpose, multifunctional. We want it to be used all the time uh, during the, uh, and we're, we're working on those operational plans now. Um, during business hours, it's it's going to function much like a lobby. And there's a lot of visibility between these two buildings. It, we, it should feel like a campus. There's a lot of glass. Um, so I, it will be an active space, I believe, during the day. Um, it'll have flexible furniture, uh, soft seating. Uh, it will also be used for um, Board of Park Commissioner meetings. So it will have uh, full uh, AV functionality, but not just board, board of Park Commissioner meetings. It could be used for community meetings, um, particularly outside of business hours when it's not functioning as a lobby. We can work with community groups and organizations to host meetings there. Um, it can also be used as a programmable space. So it's it's very, by design, very open and intended to be flexible with furniture. Um, so the, the question was, what's the square footage of the open area? Um, I'm going to uh, guess, take an estimate here of maybe 1,500 to 2,000 square feet in that open area. The total building is 7,000 square feet. Uh, we got a question online here on security. It's down in Florida, but this question is, are there any plans for a disc golf course? It's quite popular and seems to be budding. There are opportunities for bringing... There are opportunities for bringing tournaments to the entire area and economic device. That is a great question. Uh, disc golf would be a, uh, that is a great uh, feedback opportunity uh, for part of our pros plan. We, uh, those are the types of, of community priorities that we want to understand. So encourage uh, you to provide that feedback, uh, take the pros survey, uh, get on the pros website and, and provide that feedback as we plan for future parkland development. That's a great question. Uh, the question was, are, will community spaces at Arletta be available to nonprofits at no cost or is there a fee? Um, I mentioned uh, in an earlier question that PennMet Parks is has just completed a study of recreation programs and facilities in our community. Part of that study is looking at um, our fees and developing some very fundamental um, philosophical approaches to how we develop fees, um, making it uh, making those fees um, consistent, objective, um, and in alignment with how our community values uh, the ser services that PennMet Parks provides. We did quite a bit of public outreach in November, November and December and January um, a few months ago to get that feedback. We and we have developed what we call a cost recovery pyramid, and it's in this report. Um, I'm happy to share it offline, but. Uh, so the short answer is we are uh, we are taking that data and we are beginning to look at our facility and field use um, procedures. We want to improve the access for our community. We want to make those um, reservations, those rentals, those fees user friendly, uh, a user friendly process and um, fair uh, fees. So we're just beginning to look at that with the data from this report. That is the work we're looking at now. Today, there is a fee for nonprofits. There is a re it's a reduced fee for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. at, at the new indoor facility, there's going to be a wall dedicated for local. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay. Yes, we are the the author. Today is not going to uh, will it be enough for that drawing some stuff in that small area or whatever you want to call it to have a meeting like this? Yes. Maybe the community fairs meeting or something like this. Another thing that uh, Kevin Parks did was he has three baseball diamonds at it in Olympia Park two years ago. They put our cricket turf in the infields because every time the yellow sprinkle rain the ball would be all dirty and have to come to the game. They get so many more games in now, it's just absolutely amazing. And uh, both high schools use those fields on a regular basis when the weather's not so good. And so the founder club has been lobbying us to put turf in the outfield so that they can put their small kids to do their practices in the winter time and they want us to put lights on it too. So the community is really reaching out and, and encouraging us with many factors. Any more questions? Oh. Sorry, Allie, thank you. Great presentation. Um, when are you moving into the estimated date to move into the new facility? And when you do, are you vacating the old facility? Thank you. The question is when is the estimated date for Penmet Park's admin staff to move into the new facility? Uh, it'll be early to mid-summer, June or July is what we're looking at. And yes, we will be vacating our current facility, which is a leased space. Any more Thank you. The question was, uh, do we have any concessions or coffee sandwich shops built into the new facility? So the new facility has uh, some flexibility for, to accommodate those things. And so to be more specific, there is the infrastructure for a warming kitchen. So um, to come in and cater out of. There is the infrastructure for a, a coffee cart or a sandwich cart in the in the new facility. There's also a servery area, a counter space in the exit that's being installed in the existing facility in the open space that could be potentially used for that purpose. It could be used uh, for programmatic purposes. It could be used for neighbors having a meeting together. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gabby. Now we move on to the good. We're some of our listeners and people in the room. So anyway, Brittany Wilkins w Wickens with Peninsula Light Company is online here today. Peninsula Light Company is always a sponsor for this event. So Brittany, do you have an update for us? Hey, yes. Uh, thank you so much. I, for one, am super excited for the Penn Met uh, facility. I have two young boys who need space to run and um, preferably not outside in the rain. So super excited for that. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, update from Penn Light is we have one more week about of uh, voting. So if you are a Penn Light member, we encourage you to uh, utilize your ballot that was sent uh, in March and place your vote for the board of directors. Our annual meeting is May 1st on, at 5.30 p.m. virtual. Uh, that information will go out <clears throat> this week. Um, there's opportunities to email in any questions that will be addressed at the annual meeting. And um, you can find all that information on our website or our social media pages. All right, thank you, Brittany. And then Katrina Knutson, the city administrator is online. Katrina, do you have a report for us? Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me, Kurt? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, quick updates, I know we're short on time. I just wanted to thank Allie for her wonderful presentation and uh, just state that we have a really wonderful relationship with Allie and, uh, and PenMet and really appreciate this update today. I um, wanted to give a brief update on community safety. The council and mayor continue to be involved in Olympia regarding the pursuits. Uh, we know that's very important to our local businesses, being able to pursue uh, criminals, as well as the Blake decision, which was being discussed yesterday between the House and Senate as their drafts of the bills do not agree. Uh, the mayor has signed on to a letter with um, over 30 other mayors who are requesting the Senate version, which would make uh, drug use a gross misdemeanor rather than a simple misdemeanor. Um, and particularly noting because state law preempts local governments from being more restrictive on um, drug laws. So we know that uh, community safety is of paramount importance to all, but in particular our businesses, and wanted to let you know that we're continuing to work on that. 
Um, we are getting ready to release this week our summer concert lineup at Scanzi Park. So that will be going out very soon, beginning the second week of July, running through August. So you can look forward to um, wonderful concerts uh, filling our downtown this summer. And lastly, wanted to give an update on the city coordination with Pierce Transit. Um, they have a new CEO, and we've been delighted that he's been able to look at some items that were uh, previously not available to us, including we continue to talk about bus service to the hospital, as we know that that is um, a large community need. And the new CEO um, has assembled a new safety team that's going to be evaluating the large round of re-evaluating the large roundabout for uh, to see if a bus could go around the roundabout to get to the hospital, as that's been one of the larger barriers there. So um, if not, he believes that he can consider smaller buses and uh, things like that. In addition, um, they're experiencing a lot of shortages in staff, so they cannot provide trolley service each day this summer, but we have been able to coordinate with them, and they will be providing trolley service in the city of Gig Harbor on Thursdays and Saturdays. Thursdays to service um, mostly the farmer's market, as we know that's a large day downtown, and then Saturday in order to service all of our events and businesses. And they are fully committed to full trolley service in 2024. So just wanted to report that for the community, as I know that that's of uh, increased interest for all. Um, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Katrina. And report from the chamber, Mary. The new um, profile magazine is out and this year it is the visitor guide, the official visitor guide for the city as well as, well as the relocation guide. I want to point out a couple of pages and these are free. Take them home with you. Uh, page 64 will show you all of the parks in the area, both state and Penn Met parks, key Penn parks. Um, so that's the, a lot of good information on there. Um, to piggyback off of what Katrina was talking about, there are some other maps that you'll find in here. 57 has a map of the city where you can see some of that, as well as neighborhood map on page 52. Those seem to be the most popular things that people are asking for when they come into our office. Um, if you want a sneak peek at the lineup for so Summer Sounds, then uh, I know they're going to be announcing it formally later, but go to page 58 in the magazine, and then you can be in the group that's the first to know. So there you go. Anyway, um, but look for these if you want to, if you have an office or a location that you want to bring a bunch of these to, uh, stop by our office. We can give you a box or two, and uh, otherwise take these, and there will be some up at City Hall shortly. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Miriam. And so what's coming up? You know, we are halfway through April and uh, summer's just around the corner, but you never know it by the weather we have here, right? It's just amazing. <laughs> but anyway, the Paddler's Cup is coming up on April 29th where the kids and the adults will be racing uh, canoes and kayaks and stand up paddle boards all over the bay and across the Narrows. And then on Sunday is the annual Dragon Boat Races where communities, uh, you know, businesses and, the, and nonprofits get together and and uh, get their employees on a boat and the Gig Harbor Dragon Boat team steers and coaches them. That's a really a fun event. It lasts all day long. Come on down, check it out. And then Penn Med Parks will be hosting the family dances in the mid-May at Ocean 5 on Friday, May 12th and uh, Saturday, May 13th. Very popular events. They sell out. And that's why we do it two nights in a row. And we call them family dances because everybody comes, grandparents, mother, father, what have you. So anyway, and then the Maritime Gig Parade is coming up May 3rd. Oh my goodness. June, I mean, June 3rd, yeah. And uh, I, so how many, how many entries into the parade, Mary? Over halfway. Yeah. And all the sponsorships have been sold, haven't they? <laughs> okay. So check in with uh, Chamber and Miriam if you want to participate in that event. Thank you. And then what's happening here next week, Carrie Ann Eckberg, the executive director of the Gig Harbor Downtown Waterfront Alliance, will give us an update of what's going on. Uh, and then the following week will be Colette Smith, the president of the Peninsula Art League will be joining us. Later in May, Robin Denson will be here. And in June, we'll have Derek Kilmer, Sheriff Ed Troyer, and Chief Kelly Busey on different dates. Thank you.